Okay, so last topic we're going to discuss is resonance and these things called Hammett constants. So with Hammett constants, what we're trying to do is we're trying to define how the pKa of benzoic acid is going to change. So here we have this acidic proton, we've got the pKa, we want to know whether or not it goes up or down. First thing I want to do is define this whole sign or uh, sign convention because it's a little counterintuitive. If you have a positive Hammett constant, that means the pKa goes down. And if you have a negative Hammett constant, the pKa goes up. Easy way to remember this, positive Hammett constant, stronger acid, lower pKa, higher Ka. Okay, So place emphasis not on the actual value of the pKa, but the strength of the acid when it comes to positive or negative. Uh, similarly, negative Hammett constant means that the pKa goes up. You're decreasing the strength of the acid. Now, when it comes to resonance, the trend is resonance effects increase at the para position. Okay, they increase at the para position. If you draw the electrons and how they move, it's pretty clear why it's so significant at the reson at the para position compared to the meta. So on the left, let's just start pushing some electrons. And what you're going to notice is when you push these electrons, the positive charge is going to be generated on the carbon that's directly attached to our COOH. Okay? The electrons pretty much move directly across the um, uh, aromatic ring. Okay, So they move from one side to the other side straight across. And having this positive, um, having this positive charge on this carbon would be good for stabilizing the CO minus uh, functional group that would that would uh, results when you have a deprotonation. Okay. On the other hand, the electron withdrawing in the meta position, what's going to end up happening is notice that we're generating the positive charge not on the carbon. Okay. It's still directly across from the electron withdrawing group, but it's not on the carbon that's going to be attached to the COH. So there's going to be less stabilization of the conjugate base, and if there's less stabilization of the conjugate base, you know, that means your acid um, wasn't, um, you know, there's still going to be some stabilization, but it's not going to be as significant as in the para position. Okay, this little trick also works for donating group, um, withdrawing groups. They withdraw them from the carbon directly across from it, so the para uh, position is more important. Same thing with donating, as uh, we saw in like. Uh, the last video, it donates straight across to the carbon that's directly across from the para position. Okay, now what can be kind of tricky with resonance donors and resonance acceptors is that resonance donors have an opposite effect that's working against them. Okay, so donors, they're typically electronegative atoms, all right, they're typically electronegative atoms and they're trying to accept elect, they're trying to uh, donate electron density towards a given functional group. But inductively, they want to withdraw, okay? So we have two different things working against each other. Via resonance, they want to donate electron density. Via the inductive effect, they want to withdraw electron density. And there's three categories that you deal with with resonance donors, all right? Halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. The inductive effect is more important, okay? So the inductive effect is more important for your halogens. So. Overall, the halogens are going to be electron withdrawing groups, and they're going to be better at the meta position. Okay, thing you want to keep in mind: distance. Um, with the distance, the inductive effect becomes stronger. Also, the resonance donation is weaker at the meta position. So overall, you're going to have a stronger electron withdrawing group at the meta position. Okay. Second example. NH2. All right, NH2, the more important effect is resonance, okay? Resonance donation. So overall, NH2 is going to be an electron donating group, okay? And it's going to be a stronger electron donating group at the para position. Para position very important because resonance is going to have a greater effect and the inductive effect is not going to be as significant due to distance factors. And the third thing it's very, very tricky. Um, oxygen attached to like an alkyl group or hydrogen. The thing is the resonance donation and the inductive withdrawal, they're pretty, pretty close in strength to each other. So they're going to be, so the OR groups are going to be electron donating group at the para position. Think about it logically. Um, resonance, they want to donate. Resonance is more significant at the para position. So the group is going to be electron donating. 
On the other hand, inductive effect wants to be electron withdrawing. Electron withdrawing is more um, significant at the meta position because inductive effects um, get stronger with a closer distance. So at the meta position, an OR group is going to be electron withdrawing. This is the only one that really is going to change from electron donating to electron withdrawing. Um, with halogens and the NH2, it's just a matter of how strong of an electron withdrawing group you have and how strong of an electron donating group you have. Okay. Resonance acceptors are a lot more simple. Okay. You have carbon, nitrogen, or sulfur that's attached to more electronegative atoms. So like, for example, if carbon is bound to nitrogen, or if nitrogen is bound to oxygen, or sulfur is bound to oxygen. Okay. So it's not just carbon, nitrogen, or sulfur. They also have to be bound to electronegative atoms. Now with acceptors, they inductively want to electron withdraw. And then via resonance, they also want to inductively withdraw. So, you know, no big deal. They're both working together to withdraw electrons. It's always stronger at the para position because of the increased resonance effect. Okay, the effect of resonance um, is going to be stronger at the para position. So that makes them better electron withdrawing groups at the para position compared to the um, meta position. Okay, and one last thing um, these. Hammett constants, the positive Hammett and the negative Hammett. Um, on the exams I've seen in past years, they, they give you these values, okay? So they give you these values, no need to memorize them. What I would suggest though is have a conceptual understanding about, you know, what it means to have a greater Hammett constant or a lower Hammett constant and whether or not positive or negative means stronger acid or weaker acid.